So there was some level of inspiration for putting this video together where actually a really good friend of mine up north, um, I'll keep him anonymous for this. Um, he reached out to me and he actually didn't realize that I did the eye movement therapy or just offered therapy to people. And I'd actually met this guy through working with one of my clients at the time and um, he'd actually gone to him for, for dating coaching and we just kind of became good friends. We'd connected on some other things and um, uh, we just sort of stayed in contact at least over the last few years since I'd, I'd seen him. And he'd reached out to me um, and because I'd been putting posts on like my Instagram uh, about with the eye movement therapy and he had asked me for some advice um, and he'd said that he was currently in a relationship, but he was still stuck or caught up on the previous ex or girlfriend that he'd had. And she was quite narcissistic and sociopathic. And although the relationship that he had with her, it wasn't that long. I think it was a couple of months, but it wasn't that long. But it made such or left such an impression on him that he found it very difficult to move on from her. But going a little bit deeper with this situation, she had then uh, created or formed a relationship with one of his closest friends and then had become a, uh, well, they, they became boyfriend and girlfriend essentially behind his back. And she'd then like moved into his area and, you know, and really wasn't giving him any sort of space. And then every now and again would just like drop him messages uh, almost to try and make, uh, make it clear that she was still around in his life in some form or another. And it, the whole experience made him very angry. Uh, it stressed him out. It's also caused him a lot of anxiety. And he's also found it very difficult to trust people and in a way connect with people and move on from this previous ex. Uh, and he'd actually said as well, like, like because of it, it was having implications in his current relationship. And I really, really sympathized with him um, because I've experienced very similar things myself. I had, uh, in fact, one of my most recent relationships that I came out of, and this is going back about a year or so ago, um, it turned out that after we became boyfriend and girlfriend, she was incredibly sociopathic. And she had this really weird trait of like purposefully trying to have an argument with me in public where she just loved to create a scene and people to, you know, pay attention to the situation. And she was also very good at articulating things. And I hate confrontations anyway. But I really, really felt for my friend. Um, and so he asked me about with the eye movement stuff and would it be able to make a difference to his situation? Uh, now, of course, I, I said, yes, it does. And, and I explained to him, as I want to kind of explain now, what kind of difference the eye movement therapy could make if, let's say, you have exhausted all other options. So, like, for example, maybe you've gone to a therapist and you've tried to sort of talk about all the issues and problems that you've got um, or the traumatic experiences that you felt from being in a relationship where you have been abused or you have been treated badly. Um, and I know with my friend, he was even asking me, like, does he have PTSD? Um, and I tried to explain look, that you haven't got PTSD. PTSD is a very extreme form of a traumatic experience. And you have certainly got uh, PTSD-like symptoms, but you haven't got PTSD. You know, and simply put, um, when you have a bad experience of something, there are going to be certain triggers that will certainly reminisce that particular event. So if something as bad has happened to you and let's say um, there was uh, a perfume that your partner was wearing as they were, you know, being nasty and treating you badly then the likelihood is that when you're uh, getting back into the dating scene, if you meet someone who was wearing that same perfume, 
there is a possibility that that smell or that aroma is going to trigger that memory or memories of those bad experiences. So, of course, there will be those PTSD-like symptoms there because there has been something that has triggered the memory and has then caused an emotion to happen or play out from that. So, with that then being said, uh, you can detach that emotion from the memory. And that's what I do like with the eye movement stuff. And I trained in the eye movement simply because I had had traumatic and, tra uh, well, yeah, traumatic things happen to me in the past. And then I went and had the eye movement therapy myself. And I was just fascinated with how simple the exercises were from it. But yet it made that difference. It genuinely did separate the unwanted emotions that I had from the memories that I had been recalling from the past. So in the situation for my friend, I said to him, well, look, you know, we can definitely uh, work on those memories that are triggering certain emotions for you. And for him, what came up was anxiety, definitely anger, um, and even depression as well. And I said to him, look, have a think about what particular memories that you recall that certainly elicit all of these emotions. And then from that, if you feel that you want to work on them, then we can work on them. And it's applicable really for, for anyone, depending on what kind of painful memories that you've got. And I know for like even a lot of guys, it might not even just be about the relationships front, it might be that maybe something bad has happened to them where they've been publicly embarrassed or humiliated as they were growing up, or maybe their parents were overprotective. And so they've learned or grasped this idea that you can't talk to strangers. Or if you try and put yourself out there and you feel that sting of rejection, then you will be publicly humiliated. You will be made a fool of. And so people just don't want to experience their pain. And fair rightly so with that, that you know, you would just avoid a situation entirely. But it's when you start avoiding those situations that you just let your brain start playing out those memories and you start creating a new perception or reality for those memories that make them even more painful. So, for example, if let's say growing up you were rejected or maybe uh, when you were at uni you'd found yourself in a relationship and it was an abusive one. Maybe you weren't necessarily beaten, but maybe there was a lot of verbal abuse. Maybe there was a lot of things just saying like how you're not good enough, like, oh, you're not capable of, of succeeding in this or like, oh, you're such a loser. And I have heard this from guys as well. So these aren't uncommon examples. But then you've got guys who they've had someone that they genuinely care about and love start giving them such horrible and nasty abuse and we could probably even call it advice that they adopt that as a belief that oh well maybe they aren't capable of this or that and so that reality that then gets shaped that nothing is possible for them or that they are they they believe that they are a bad person when they are definitely not and it's simply because they've been in a relationship with someone who has treated them badly um, so definitely like for my friend, when he said about his circumstance, I said that is absolutely a fix that something like eye movement therapy can do. So what eye movement therapy in particular will help with will be just to change how he feels about those previous memories that he had with his ex. And it will also change how he feels about the fact that his best friend at the time has now gone into a relationship with his ex. And when we were discussing, I said to him, like, maybe you also need to consider or reframe this and think maybe it's worth you feeling sorry for your friend because now he has fallen for the same traps and techniques that this woman has done on him. 
And he knows as well, my friend knows, that he'd she'd actually done the same thing to guys even prior to him. So it's not an uncommon routine that this woman has being very narcissistic and sociopathic and essentially taking advantage of their part or of her partner and then just moving on to the next partner when she gets bored. So I said to him, look, definitely we can work on those things. I wouldn't worry or stress too much on the anger side of things, but it's good if you can uh, pick up on the emotions that you've got, because if you feel certainly, and I, and I tried to do a gauge out of 10, I said to him, like, if you feel that there is a gauge out of 10 and it's a strong number that you've got these emotions, when you think about certain situations that played out with you and your ex, then we can work on that. We can look to uh, bring that emotion down and if it is something like an eight, nine or 10, then we can try and bring it down to like a three or a four or lower. And then when you think back about those memories, they won't be a bother for you. And the point with then at least bringing down the emotion, then means that they aren't going to be bothering him so much, which actually then allows any guy to move on. Um, and that is something that is really important to bear in mind with doing the eye movement therapy is that it just removes the barriers that are preventing you from taking more positive steps forward. So at least then like with my friend, he can then just be focusing on the relationship that he's uh, currently in rather than feeling some like weird uh, regret, remorse or anger, depression, sadness, anxiety or anything like that about his current situation. He can just let that go. And then it just won't bother him as much. There'll always probably still be that bother because the situation is that this woman has gone into a relationship with one of his best friends. So it's kind of in his social circle or, I, I, well, I don't know if if they've, uh, they're have they out of the social circle now, but, um, you know, it, it's understandable that there will always be some feeling there, but at least if I can help to relinquish some of that emotion and just allow him to focus on having more positive relationships with people or focus on the more happier times uh, or with the people that he does genuinely care about, then that is where at least the eye movement therapy can make all the difference. Um, so in fact, I actually, I kind of use the example with people about, let's say someone ha was in a car accident, you know, and touch with that never happens for people. But let's say someone was in a car accident and they are now scared to go in a car again, then at least with the eye movement therapy, it will change how they feel about being in a car, bring down that anxiety that they might have. And then it might just bring that hurdle down to a point that now they can be comfortable at least sitting in a car. And then maybe they will actually go in a ride in a car and then get that positive reinforcement and realize actually being in a car and driving everywhere isn't so bad. It's not what it was like. And they can let go of those previous memories holding them back. So just answering the question once more time, can eye movement therapy help you get over a breakup? Absolutely, it can. Uh, it is obviously a case by case basis, depending on the complexity of someone's situation. But ultimately, it is able to remove those negative memories and uh, or negative experiences and emotions from those memories and just get you to reframe how you think about it. And then maybe when you look back at the bad experiences that you had in your breakup, you might go, you know what? it was probably a good thing that it ended. Or, you know what? I can see that I just wasn't compatible with that person and vice versa. Or, you know what? That person really wasn't good for me. If I'd have stayed with them, I would have been in a terrible situation. So I am glad that I am out of it. So it just completely shifts those limiting beliefs that you've got and hopefully gets you to see um, that you can move on. Um, from your breakups if they really are a bother for you um, and then certainly like for guys who are maybe scared to go and do cold approaching it does that same thing as well it can at least reduce that barrier of anxiety that you might have to go and talk to someone especially if there are limiting beliefs or memories that you've got 
that maybe you're not even aware of as well. I mean, the one of the things I think that does fascinate me with the eye movement therapy is that sometimes the ripple effect of a memory can happen from something that you just didn't think was necessarily an issue. Because when you're starting to go back through memories and going back through the strength of the emotions on those memories, you start finding that actually it wasn't that experience that you had with this breakup that caused it. There was something at a much deeper root or level that needed to be worked on. And then you find like days later after you've had weird dreams and stuff, suddenly you're in a very different headspace and things aren't as bad as you thought they were, or you change those limiting beliefs about yourself of having relationships with people or how you interact with people. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video. When you had your breakup, if you've been in a relationship, of course, and you've come out and you've had that that breakup, whether it would have been a good breakup or a bad breakup, have there been any memories from the relationship that when you think back at it, it causes you anxiety or stress? And I'd love for you to share it in the comments below, not because I want to elicit any negative emotions. It's more that I want you to be able to show other guys just, you know, that every guy experiences bad things in relationships and that no guy should feel alone if they've experienced some kind of abuse or they've been treated badly in some form or another. I think every guy at some point in their lives have experienced some kind of really horrific relationship that has left a lasting impact on them in a negative way. So leave a comment below. I'd love to hear these sort of things. Um, so at least then we can kind of create a bit of a community around that. And if you can, please as well, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I've dedicated this video to my friend. So I do genuinely hope uh, if you watch this, I'm going to send you a link to it anyway. Uh, but um, if you genuinely watch this, I do hope that this kind of gives you some uh, leeway into this idea if you did want to go forward with doing the eye movement or not. Um, I know when we last spoke, you were kind of unsure but you we we had such a heartfelt communication over instagram that i did i wanted to just make this video for you um so yeah like subscribe if you can uh comment below i of course have been dan that dating anxiety guy and if you are struggling as well with any limiting beliefs or you have had a breakup by all means, do check out my website and find out a bit more about the integral eye movement therapy that I offer because I do offer a uh, free uh, consultation of sorts um, to find out where you're at. So check that out. And until the next video, take care of yourself.